Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I want you to listen tonight. I want you to say this with me. Say, uh, Lord, tonight I have New Year's to hear. And I know we should say that every Wednesday. We should say that every Sunday. Every time we open the Bible, we should say, Lord, we have, we have new, ears, new ears to hear. I have a new ear to hear. Tell me something I haven't heard. Because if not, you can be making decisions based on, on past knowledge when God's trying to give you a revelation. And you have to be careful. Because if not, then you're just operating based on, you know, yesterday's ammo. And, and, and you know what? You're shooting blanks today. And God doesn't want you to shoot blanks. God wants you to, to be fully charged and, and ready to go. Uh, there's a verse in the Bible. I want to read this to you. And I want you, I know many of us have read this, but I want to open your eyes tonight a little bit. Is that okay? All right, check this out. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Look up on the screens. Um, did I, nope, is that the wrong? Uh, Hebrews 13, is that, did I give you the wrong one? Yeah, there, that's it, that's it. Okay, look at this, look at this. Jesus Christ, now, now, now read this with fresh eyes, okay? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Okay, okay. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he is the same forever. Father, I pray that tonight as I speak that you would think through my mind and speak through my mouth and that we would all get a fresh revelation of what you want to speak to us. And I ask you in the name of Jesus that tonight that people would receive a fresh rhema, uh, a word from heaven, and that, Father, it would just explode in their spirit and that they would begin to not only develop their spiritual maturity, but that there would be seeds of great fruit being birthed in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, Jesus is the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he's the same forever. So what does that mean? If you really think about it, as we all go through life, as we all go through experiences, we have to remind ourselves that Jesus does everything the same way the way he handled situations for the people of God yesterday are the same ways that Jesus handles the people of God today. And the same way Jesus handles the people of God today is the same way that Jesus handles the people of God tomorrow, in the future, and forevermore. What, what the scripture is saying that I think that sometimes we, we fail to understand is that sometimes we think as we read the word that this word, with maybe not intentionally, but unintentionally, we think that this word that we're reading from these people, these disciples, or these writers, it only applied to them in their time, but it doesn't apply for 2018 as if we're something special. Jesus said, I am the same yesterday as I am the same today and as I'll be the same tomorrow. In other words, Jesus is saying that my function doesn't change. My correction doesn't change. My way of revealing myself to you, my way of revealing my word to you, it's the same way as those who were hungry and thirsty to seek me then. It applies the same way to you. In other words, if you want, if you're, a, let's say you were a woman and you were dealing with a major physical issue, you would have to go, up, go and look up some woman in the Bible who had an issue that was so big, that was so huge, that no doctors could help her, and then find out what was it about that woman that she got a healing, a miracle, a breakthrough. For example, the woman with the issue of blood. How many years was her issue for? I wonder what she did because the same Jesus who healed her yesterday is the same Jesus that wants to heal you today. But it's interesting how it doesn't apply to me. Are you, are you with me? And I, I want to say this because if not, we're just, we're just reading the Bible uh, without, without a, 
a hunger for revelation because every single one of you right now have a season you're facing and you're frustrated or, or you've already been trained to respond or react a specific way and things keep happening but nothing, nothing changes. And, and you have to come to that revelation. Okay, Jesus is the same yesterday. He's the same today and he's the same. In other words, Jesus is is ready and willing to do what he does best, but we have to begin to learn how to apply what people were doing in order to see their miracles, their breakthroughs, their healings, their, 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 their manifestation, whatever it was that they were believing for. He functions the same way as yesterday, today. He reveals the same way as yesterday, today. He heals the same way as yesterday, today. He corrects the same way as yesterday, today. He leads the same way as yesterday, today. But we have to begin to start learning how to really dive into God's word and realize, okay, what's my situation? I got to go find the answer because someone in the Bible has already been where I'm, what I'm going through right now. And I need to find out how they did it. And that takes work. That takes digging in the scriptures and so don't think that Jesus changes things up in 2018. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he's the same forever more. But one thing that I have learned about God, <laughs> haven't you noticed that God has unpredictability? He's very unpredictable. Like though he's the same, it's funny because he's just a mysterious God. I'm the same yesterday. I'm the same today. And I'm the same forever more. But he's not predictable. You know who's predictable? The devil. Like we go through stuff, and then we're like this, shocked. We're surprised. <gasps> but he's predictable. Satan always does the same things over and over and over and over again. However, though Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, he is so unpredictable because you just don't know. See, there's Satan's surprise. There's the enemy surprise. And then there's the things that you and I create that are surprises, Right? You know, you start saying things like, man, I never, I never thought it would happen like this. Or I never thought this would happen to me. But the truth is this, is that there really is no surprise. We have to understand that God is not surprised in whatever, you're, whatever season you're in right now. But we also have to understand that my God is very, he's unpredictable. I love that about him. It's kind of scary at the same time because, you know what, you think you already have it down, and then he just switches it on you. Like he changes the angle. And it's like, why do you have to do that, God? I was so comfortable, right? And it just doesn't, it, that's just, I, I love that. So there are times in our life that we can't explain why some things happen. And then there are times in our life where we have to understand that there are situations that we created. So there are things that happen, and then there are things that we created. There are things that happen that will surprise you, and there are things that you created that will surprise others. But at the end of the day, aren't you glad that God's never surprised? He's never surprised. It's not like God looked at us and saw what you created or saw what the enemy created in your life, and he said, uh-oh, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> he, he saw everything. And when you think about this, you begin to hopefully get a little bit more peace of mind, realizing that, you know what, though, though, though I'm going through whatever it is I'm going through, um, I, I know that, that I have all kinds of surprises, and I know that I serve a mysterious God that, and, and let, me, let me just be honest with you, God will never explain himself to you. He just won't explain. As a matter of fact, have you noticed that God always likes to withhold information from us as well? Like, number one, he's not going to explain himself. I was talking to a precious, this lady, precious person. And uh, we were talking about uh, uh, knowing, uh, really validating God. And I said, you know what, the reality is that God doesn't need men to validate him. He's very secure in who he is. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so if God is secure in whom, in whom he is, uh, we, we, don't, we don't have to even begin to think that we have to begin to even validate God or even think that God owes you and I an explanation. God doesn't owe anyone in this room an explanation. And most often, he won't explain nothing to you. But for some mysterious reason, though, he doesn't explain things to me. 
he reveals things to me. And it's all of a sudden it's like, wow, God. Like, dang, I thought this was going to turn off way, way worse than I thought. Right? That's how I love my God. Say he's a mysterious God. So he's always full of surprises, all right? So you can't get to the place where you just think that all your setbacks shouldn't surprise us. No, God will always undo all your surprises. Look at this, 1 Peter 4.12, look. He says, my friends, mis amigos, do not be surprised at the terrible trouble which now comes to what? You see, Satan will tempt you. God will test you. So, so, so sometimes you're facing a situation that to you is a big surprise. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. But God's saying, well, guess what? You know what? If you look at this with a different perspective, this is really a test. And I want to test and see whether or not you're going to react or whether or not you're going to respond with faith. Because beyond this situation that you're facing right now, God also has a surprise. I also said that, that God loves to withhold information from us because think about it if God told you and I everything that was going to happen everything that was good and bad and ugly and and painful and hurtful you know what would happen man we would ruin the whole surprise we wouldn't even show up to the party he would he doesn't he doesn't give you information so maybe right now you're in a place of you're just in in surprise in not a good way you're just surprised like I can't believe this is happening. Well, guess what? It's not a surprise for God. Or maybe there's something that you created that you messed up. And other people are surprised. Well, I'm so glad that though my God can trump any and every surprise, but you know what makes me more happy? Is that God is still in control. Even when you're out of control, God remains in control. We got, we got to get that understanding. What, what surprised you right now? What surprise? Has anyone ever had a surprise party? Huh? They lie to you. Took you out all day. Acted like they forgot you. And then you get home. And it's a surprise. And you're just like, what the? I thought nobody loved me. I thought nobody cared about me. That's what happens with us. All hell breaks loose in your life. And you thought God forgot you. You thought God didn't have a plan for you. You thought God wasn't in the strategy. You thought God, he wasn't in, involved. You thought God was just out, I don't know, on phone calls, answering prayers. I don't know. But at the end of the day, God said, surprise, I got your back. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, can we keep going? Because we still we haven't even got on the message yet. That's just the opener. Are you guys ready? <laughs> so say, God doesn't have to explain Himself to me, and say, "Thank you, Lord, for withholding information from me." Because I'd, I'd ruin my own surprise, right? We, we won't show up to the party. So God is awesome like that. So think about this: when I think about how God works things out, it, it, it reminds me of the children of Israel. Um, the children of Israel are in slavery in Egypt. We know that story. But just picture this for a second. I want you to use your imagination because you're all brilliant, okay? So the people of Israel are, are pleading, crying, begging, and frustrated, asking God to bring them liberty, to save them, to rescue them. So just, it, just imagine the people that were just wailing and crying because they just they don't know how much longer they can keep living this way. And simultaneously, just when you thought that God was not even listening to your prayer, just when you thought that God wasn't even paying attention to your life, God, at the same time while he's listening to your petition, at the same time, which Satan can do that, he's not that smart. He does, he's not a multitasker. He can only do one thing at a time. But my God, he can answer every single person's prayer. God can listen to every single person, every single daughter, every single son, every single, every single person. And simultaneously, while they were out there crying and pleading and frustrated and begging, God was over here talking to Moses. See, so many times we're thinking God is not listening to my prayer. It's not that God's not listening to your prayer. It's that God is already talking to the solution to your prayer. 
Oh, y'all ain't getting this. Maybe I should bring a movie out instead and we'll just watch something nice. At the same time that you're pleading and crying and you left me, God is already talking to your Moses. See, the problem is that Moses is just taking a little bit of time because Moses is having an issue to respond to the call of God. And sometimes you either have a Moses that God is sending or you are the Moses that people are waiting for. Amen? Amen. So we can find ourselves in both worlds because we all live in both worlds. And so God simultaneously is trying to work everybody's stuff out. But he's not surprised. Do you think he was surprised that Moses was going to deny the call of God? He's asking him, hey, would you go and uh, deliver my people and let my people go and I'll give you. No, I'm good. I'm good. No, Mo- Mosey, <laughs> take off your sandals, bro. You're, on, you're standing on holy ground. Okay. He takes off his chunkless, throws him out, and he's right there. Right? The, br- the bush is burning. Moses. But, but I can't speak. Do you remember when, when, when Nebuchadnezzar was, was like wiping out every, just the best way to say it is this way. Nebuchadnezzar was killing every Christian, every person that was believing in a God who, who we love. While Daniel began his fast to break and destroy the yoke of bondage of the spiritual battle that was happening, the angel... The archangel Michael said, Daniel, (laughs) this was 21 days he's fasting. Now he's having a conversation with the angel. And the angel said, Daniel, (laughs) you think it took 21 days for me to respond to your prayer. But guess what? The moment you opened your mouth, I was already in battle. Amen? Amen. So so I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know how you're going to react or how you're going to respond. But it's time to be mature because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And how we did it for them is how he's going to do it for you. The question is, will you have the maturity to step into discipleship and be that man and woman of God that God has created you to be? The question is, are you going to take the word and start utilizing that word and really begin to be someone that works the word versus just trying to be frustrated and thinking that God's not listening to you? I hope this is helping someone tonight. (laughs) So here's another surprise. So we know Mosey goes and he does his thing. So the prayer is answered. He's there. Exodus 13, 17, 18, right? Pharaoh, he says, let the people go. He let the people go. Pharaoh let the people go. The shortest road, now look at this, the the, the shortest road from uh, Goshen to Canaan. Went through the Philistine country. It's kind of like Waze. Anybody use Waze? I always enter my address, but then I always go to all the routes. Why? Because I want the shortest way. Okay? God was Waze. And he didn't want the shortest route. And it says right there, but God didn't lead them that way. God said, if they have to go into battle. They might change their minds. Huh? If I were to reveal to you, this is what I'm saying. If I were to reveal to you what would have happened to you on June 5th of 2018, you would, you would run. Then, I, then we'd have to go hunt for you. Then I'd have to send angels and have to deal with you. And so there are things that happen, and then there are things you create. But the beautiful thing, and regardless of how much a surprise it is, once again, but God is in control. And so right here, God says, okay, I could have taken the short way, but we're not going to go that way. Some of you have been taking too many shortcuts, and you're finding yourself right back in the same place. And he says, and God said, "If, if they have to go into the battle, they might change their minds. They might even return to Egypt. So God led the people toward the Red Sea by taking them on the road through the desert. And the Israelites were prepared for what? Battle. When they went up out of Egypt. So God was protecting them initially from the shortcut of a death. 
So if they would have taken that shortcut, they would have not very much lived longer than getting to the open desert. So God says, we're going to get rid of the shortcut. We're going to go the longer route just a little bit more because right now I just know, I know that there's an ambush waiting for them. See, so many times you're, you're wanting things to happen now, but God is trying to save you from an ambush. And, and the ambush could be the enemy or the ambush could be you. See, sometimes you can be at a good place in life and things are going well. And, and, and then you come to the place like, man, can it be this good? Can it be this good? And not realizing when you say things, can it be this good? You're really doubting that God can be that good. And then you self-sabotage the very good thing that God's trying to do in your life. And then you start manipulating and you start doing things like, well, let's just do it this way. And so God was saying, we're going to go the long route because by the time I deal with them in their character a little bit, they'll be ready for battle. And sure enough, they were ready for battle. We know that. But God was protecting them. Yesterday, I left work like around 9, 9.30. We were filming for uh, at the movies. Don't miss it. We're going to have crazy amazing fun this Sunday. Well, anyways, so I'm riding home yesterday and, uh, um, and I get the call from my wife and she says, uh, you, you got to get home quickly. Uh, uh, someone uh, hit your car. I'm like, what? It's like, yeah, the cops are here and everything. Just get home. I'm like, okay. So I rush home and I get there and I just see this, this, this minivan that is literally like head on with my car. My car was parked in front of my house, in front of my house. And, uh, and, and I'll tell you the back story. Front of my house, right? Let me show you pictures real quick. So, okay. That's in front of my house. The car got thrown back 25 feet. Okay. The car, I had, we had left it parked, like, literally in front of the house. It was, it was up the hill. Up the hill. Okay. So I get there. I see the cop. I'm talking to him, but thank God for my neighbor. He... You know, he stopped the guy from trying to take off, and, uh, and, and anyway, so he calls the cops, he comes. So I get there, and, and then the cop and I are talking. I'm like, hey, is he under the influence? I mean, how do you get on this side of the road, bro? Like, th this, this is going this way. He's over here, and he's on the curb. He's like, yeah, we're still working on it. You know, going to do a sobriety test. And I'm like, okay. So while we're talking, giving them my information and all that stuff, he's in his car, and, and he's, like, hiding all kinds of stuff. And then, of course, he gets arrested. He gets taken away. Okay, whatever. That's what happened there. But early in the day, see, so many times, until you see this, then you, it, it's like things that make you go, hmm. So let's back up now. It's like rewind the movie. In the morning. So I came home quickly in the morning because one of my pipes busted <laughs> in the morning at home, my water pipes. And so I was like, all right, praise God. All right. Pipes are busted. Yay. Water everywhere. Glory to God. Okay. And so I'm coming out of my house and had, had to deal with that problem. And, and I have to rush. I have to get back to church. Right. So I'm coming out. I had borrowed my daughter's car to come to, to the house. And I said, hey, let me borrow your car real quick because uh, my wife had used this car and blah, blah, blah. So I'm ready to leave. I'm like, and I have her, my daughter's car. I'm like, why am I going to drive her car? I'm going to go back and give. So I go back in the house. I go drop her keys off. I grab my car keys. And I say, I'm going to take my car. You know, and so I'm walking to my car, and literally, I freeze. And I'm just like, oh, maybe I shouldn't take her car. You should, this, this, this is your car, dude. Take your car. And I'm talking to myself in the middle of the street. Okay, and I'm like, take, take. I'm, 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 this is the, and I, but I didn't think about this till after at the end of the night. And I remembered everything. It's almost like God rewinded my movie. And so I'm like, oh, I'll, uh. Okay, I'll take. Okay, I'll take her car. So I go back in the house, drop off the, my key, pick up her keys, come back out. So I take her car instead. All that to say this: when I got the call, my heart dropped. It literally, I felt like the wind was kicked out of me. When I got there, I saw all this that happened that night and the whole situation. See, so many times in our own little natural way of thinking, we're thinking, "Oh." An accident. But in all reality, how many believe? I know I believe this. I believe that God was already protecting me from ever taking the car 
because that probably would have happened somewhere else, somewhere in the city of Santa Clarita. But when God just stops you in your tracks and you don't understand why, and many times there are things that are happening even right now, and you're upset and you're angry and you're bitter or whatever, and you're feeling like, I don't know, why did I do that? I'll tell you why. Because God was already working simultaneously. As I was standing in the driveway of my house, God was already working things out behind the scenes. Amen. That's how God will work. Amen. Now, if you're saying, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, don't let it make sense to you, but it makes perfect sense to me. I've had... Things like that over and over and over and over and again and again and again happen like that where God is truly trying to protect you from something or some place that you should have never been in to begin with. Are you hearing me? And when you begin to understand that, that is when you begin to grow just a little bit more in that spiritual maturity of understanding that what you're going through is not such a bad thing after all. Because why? Because God is in control even when you seem like everything's out of control. That's our God. Are you here? <laughs> Perfect example. Okay, so that was things that happened, right? So that's something. I need to take that off now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and people, and you know, I had one person tell me. That doesn't go here. They're like, well, you know, it, well, good thing your insurance is going to take care of that. See, you missed the point, bro. <laughs> I'm like, it has nothing to do with the insurance. Yeah, cars are replaceable, la, 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 la. Yeah, but that's not the point. See, God says, you know what, when, when you're so earthly minded, you're spiritually no good. Don't be so consumed with your earth because then you'll never know what's God and what's you. You have to have the mind of Christ. Set your mind on things above not on things on this earth is what the Bible says. Does that mean that you also become so spooky spiritual that you're earthly no good? <laughs> no. So there's got to be a spiritual balance. And okay, Lord, I know this was you protecting me. Right now, you need to take a step back and you have to say, Lord, this is you protecting me. I don't like it. But now I don't know what's going to happen because this is already a total car. And they're like, oh, they'll just give you a new car. I'm like, what mathematics do you know? <laughs> they're just going to give you a new car. They don't just give you a new Are you crazy? They pay off your car and you start all over. Hello. <laughs> Which means down payment, da, 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 da. But you know what I'm believing, God? I'm saying, okay, God, you're going to do something awesome out of this. Right. See, because what the devil meant for bad, you're going you're gonna to make him pay sevenfold in Jesus' name. Devil, you're going to pay back right now, and it's going to be with some interest. Amen? And it's going to be, and you're going to pay. You're going to pay. And so I don't know. Maybe I'll drive in with a Ferrari next. I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that's not even like that. <laughs> May start getting those weird Christians get mad at me. Why do you drive that car? It's so pretty. I have Mercedes Benz. See, it's funny how people will judge, but they don't know the behind story. I'll tell you the behind story. What the heck? So for, I, I helped a, a brother who was losing his marriage uh, years ago. He was at the end of himself. And he was the director of Mercedes-Benz. And uh, so years ago, I helped him, restored him, his family, the whole thing. And after that, he said, I will take care of you. And for, this is my third or fourth Mercedes. Which one is it? Third? Third Mercedes. So for every Mercedes, zero down payment, 300 bucks a month. And that's because you said, because you saved my family. See, but nobody knows that. But, and now I have to explain myself. <laughs> but see, no one, no one, no one, no one lived the real. So people are going to talk. Let people talk. Amen? Amen. Awesome. Why does your wife drive a Lexus? <laughs> oh, did someone ask that? There's a backstory to that one too, much. We've given away three cars. And someone gave her that car for free 99 Yeah, in a box, a key. It's your car. I know no one's asking her. Just I'm just saying. <laughs> 
Okay, let's use another example now. Okay, so those are things that, that happen. Now let's talk about things that we create. Are you ready? Things that we create quickly. I'm almost done. We're going to get out of here soon. Okay, so y'all remember the story of Samson? Okay, are you getting something so far? Yeah, yeah okay, okay. Let's, okay. So th those are things that happen, okay, that happens. Surprise, surprise, but God always has an awesome outcome. And, and sometimes he withholds information for a moment and then boom, the aha moment comes in. It's amazing. But then there's things that we create. And those are surprises. And so Samson was a perfect example. God gave this man one job. One job. Judge the people of Israel. That's all you got to do. Samson, just judge the people of Israel. Samson was a man that God wanted to use to do awesome things. And the only thing he said to him, whatever you do, don't touch your hair. Which, he had long hair, right, Samson. And he says, don't touch your hair. Uh, don't cut your hair. Don't eat unclean things. Don't drink. Don't, don't smoke. Don't, don't be crazy. Just, just judge the people of Israel. And, and the day that you cut your hair will be the day that you will lose all your strength. Because Samson had supernatural powers, not only spiritually in his connection with God, but physically. I mean, the boy can whoop an entire army by himself. And the only thing God told him is don't touch your hair. Don't touch the hair. Don't touch what I placed in you. Don't mess with that. Don't touch the anointing. That's you. Don't do that. Don't mess with that gift. Don't mess with that talent. Protect yourself. And so God gives him this amazing thing, and the only thing we know that gave him supernatural strength was his hair. And... Um, and so that's all that God did for him, right? But then God gave him uh, some rules. And the moment God gave him some rules, sure enough, he says yes. But then a Delilah came in his life. Hey, listen, a Delilah doesn't have to be a woman. A Delilah can be a spirit that you're under. The spirit of fear could be your Delilah right now. Huh? The spirit of doubt, just always just doubt and comes and he just, the devil just, just confuses you. That, that, that can be your Delilah. What's your Delilah right now that's distracting you from the one job God gave you? What's the one thing God told you to do that you cut? What's the one thing? And so Delilah comes in and Delilah is, 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 is the person or the thing that's going to come and wear you out. And, 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 and so she keeps coming to Samson, and, and, and you know, and, and Delilah wasn't for him. De Delilah was against him because her people wanted to get rid of him. They always wanted Israel dead. Satan has always wanted you dead. And that spirit of Delilah constantly has come after you. But just know that, that God is not surprised. And so here... We, we understand that Samson created some things in his life. And so this woman comes and begins to wear him down. She says, tell me the secret sauce to the power of God in your life. What's the key? Like, man, you're buff, bro. That's awesome. So that's like, that's like <laughs> someone saying, hey, how do you get so big, man? How you? And God told you. Your job is just to keep getting big with me. Get big in my spirit. Get big in my relationship. Get big. And then the enemy is like, oh, I don't like this guy's getting big. Every time he's just getting, man, he's less distracted. Man, he's, he's less, you know, uh, uh, irritated. He's less, he's less uh, angry. He's, he's got so much love. And that just irritated Delilah. Like, why? And, and look, look at this. Judges 66, so Delilah spoke. Are you guys watching this? So Delilah spoke to Samson, and she said, tell me the secret of why you are so strong. Tell me how you can be tied up and what? You know you're jacked up when you're hanging out with someone telling you, just tell me how I can tie you up and control your life. <laughs> you know that's a devil. You know, it just starts talking to you. Tell me. Tell. That's a movie right there. I mean, if you got someone that's already coming into your life and asking you, 
tell me how I can go ahead and just take you out. And of course, what if you read the story, I'm not going to get into it for sake of time, but she's, you know, so, so be careful because Sansom started playing with Delilah. He started being cute with her. What do I mean by that? Samson starts telling her, yeah, you know what? If you cut my toenail, then I'll lose all my strength. So in the middle of the night, she would go in the bed and, and cut his toenail. And then she'd be like, she'd have the, the Philistine army come out. Okay, uh, make sure that at 8 a.m. you come in. And then she'd wake him up. Oh, Samson, Samson, the Philistine, they're coming, they're coming. And then they would rush in and he would give them all a beat down. And then, and then they would all leave all beat and everything. She'd be like, why did you lie to me? Listen, a, 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 a spirit of Delilah will keep you confused. Now, mind you, don't get stuck on a person. It can be an attitude. It could be a mindset. It can be your Delilah. You're just so, you, you literally worship your mindset. You worship your ideas. You worship your, your, your opinion. And that opinion can be your Delilah that is distracting you from the one thing God gave you to do. And so, you know, so she does this seven more times, and every day she's like, why would you lie to me? Why would you deceive me? And he's just like, ah. Oh. And so look what happens next. Look at this. In verse 16 through 17, so she continued to pester him day after day. She nagged him until he was sick and tired of it. So he told her everything. I've never used a razor on my head, he said. I've never cut my hair. That's because I've been a Nazarite since the day I was born. A Nazarite is set apart to God. If you shave my head, I won't be strong anymore. I'll become as weak as any other man. We must be careful that the Delilahs of our life don't begin to wear us out day after day, pestering after pestering, to the point where you give up the secret sauce of your power. Verse 20. And she called out, Samson, the Philistines are attacking you. He woke up from his sleep. He thought, I'll just go out and just put the same whip down like I did before. I'll shake myself free. But he didn't know that the Lord had left him. Verse 21. Then the Philistines grabbed hold of him. They poked his eyes out. They gushed his eyes out. They took him down to Gaza. They put bronze chains around him. Then they made him grind grain in the prison. His head had been shaved, but the hair on it began to grow again. See, there are things that just happen to you, and then there are things that you create. And I want you to know today that God is not surprised by either. See, some of you, you're still dealing with that Delilah of fear, that Delilah of doubt, that Delilah of your own opinion, the Delilah of I'm going to do it my way, the Delilah of disobedience. Come on, the Delilah of having that same unforgiveness, that same bitterness, and all it's there is to take your strength from you. From the one thing God called you to do. And so the beauty of, as this verse we read this. And though the enemy shaved, right? But the verse says, but then his hair began to grow. See, I don't know what you've shaved I don't know what you've lost. But with God, his grace begins to grow. I don't know what you've been running from. I don't know what you keep doing. But all I know is that when you finally come to that place where you embrace what you have done, grace begins to grow. And the hair will just begin to come. And just picture that right now. He's in prison. He has no eyes. Just think of the disappointment. Think about what he's going to do when he stands before God. Think about this was not just 
a career. This was a heavenly assignment from God the Father. And he's going to, he's going to have to stand before God to answer for the one thing God called him to do. And now he's in prison with no eyes. And how many believe that he was probably being tormented at that moment? Just thinking, what's God going to say to me? He gave me one thing to do. Just give me one job. One thing. He gave me one job. One job. But simultaneously, while you're surprised with your junk, God's already working behind the scenes. God's already dealing with your heart. And he's wooing you back. And he's saying, Chris, come. He's saying, Gilbert, get up. And it's that small, still voice that God begins to speak to you and me. And it's that small, still voice that begins to whisper, I still have strength for you. <laughs> and then James Judges 16, same, th same verse, verse 25, look. And after they had drunk a lot of wine, they shouted, bring Samson out. Let him put on a show for us. Look at that. Let him put, he went from being God's man to now he's just entertaining people. So they called Samson out of the prison and he put on a show for them. Isn't it funny how when you, you, when you choose to, to cut off what God said, don't touch, shame comes in. And now you're just walking in guilt and condemnation. And then you, you know what we do? We surrender to that shame. And we feed off that shame. And we live off that shame. And we identify with that shame. And you just keep living. You're just like this puppet, this entertainer for the devil. Just He's like, come on, bring him back out again. And we're out there just doing our thing. But God. And they had him stand near the temple pillars. And then he spoke to the servant who was holding his hand. And he said, put me where I can feel the pillars. I'm talking about the ones that hold the temple up. I want to lean against them. The temple was crowded with men and women and all the Philistine rulers were there. About 3,000 men and women were on the roof. And they were watching Samson put on a show. Then he prayed. Then he what? He what? Prayed. You and I are just one prayer away from strength. And then he prayed in his shame. And he prayed to the Lord. And he said, Lord King, show me that you still have concern for me. See, right when you thought over here, God's forgotten about me. God doesn't listen to me. I'm not good enough anymore. I've wasted years. God's saying, <laughs> but I'm still concerned. God's not concerned about your yesterday. God's not concerned about your today. What God's concerned is about your future. And he says, God, please make me strong just one more time. Let me pay the Philistines back for what they did to my two eyes. Let me do it with only one blow. Then Samson reached toward the two pillars that were in the middle of the temple. How many can, how many can say that faith rose up in Samson? That, that took faith. For you to say, God, just give me one more chance. I'll get it right. Give me one more try, God. I'll step out of this. I'll step out of this mindset. I'll step out of this seat. I'll, I'll quit it. Just give me one more chance. And he put his right hand on, the, uh, on one of them and he put his left hand on the other and he leaned hard against them. Samson said, let me die together with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might and the temple came down on the rulers. It fell on all the people who were in it. So Samson killed many more Philistines when he died than he did while he ever lived. You know what God's saying to you and me? You're going to do more in your latter than you have ever done in your former days. Stop letting the devil tell you you've wasted all these years, but at some point you got to respond and you got to say, God, give me one more try. Come on, just one blow. I'm just going to, just one. And then you got to push. And I love that. And he did more in one moment than he did in all his life. 
How many are ready for that kind of redemption? That God can do more with you now than he's ever done with you then. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.